now I'm going to show you how to check the oil level. So we have two yellow cap here. The top one, we forget it. Don't pay attention to this. We look at the bottom one. We open it slowly. This has to be done with the unit stop and off. For open it, and we take it out, like what we're doing in your car. You bite it to clean. And then put it back on and screw it all the way down. And take out again. Then we see the level. This one is full. So as long as the level between here, half of it, I would say is fine. If below half, we might need oil. What kind of oil we use? 10 W. 30 for diesel. 10 W C 0. Why we use this only? We cannot share the same oil with the truck because Canada is cold. We have to make sure the oil is good for the cold weather. If the oil is too sticky, sometimes the river cannot start by himself in winter. Nobody watch the lever outside the truck. We have a driver. So we have to pick the right oil for the lever. Then we have to check the coolant level. The coolant bottle is up there. You cannot see it until you open the top hood. This is a new unit. Some old unit, you still need to open the top hood. So we open it. You don't need to open all the way up. If you stand above your truck, you just open a little bit enough and look at the top. You see the coolant bottle with the red coolant inside. As long as you see it's full, that would be fine. If it's, you see the level down here, then you need to add coolant. I don't think the driver can add coolant by himself because that's too tall. It's dangerous. You might have to tell the dispatch and then the dispatch you might tell me or some other mechanic to do it. But if this happened on a load, now you have to figure out how can you do it. Some drivers might have a ladder or somebody can climb up and top it up. But coolant will knock loose by himself. If it lower, it must have a leak or something happen. There's a problem. That's why you need to tell the dispatch. I will introduce you how to read the different codes or alarms. Now we go to how to check the alarms. When you turn it on before unit start, we click menu, we press menu, and down, we see the alarm here, we select. If we have no alarms, you say like this. If we have alarms, one or two is at least here. So that's the best way is that take a picture and send it to the dispatch. You write down, yeah, that's good. Numbers, not the wording. We need the number. Alarm number, they have one, two, three, four, five, until 200, 300, some of them 400. Lot of alarms. Each alarm number present different meaning. So that's why number is so important. This is checking light. This is normal light. You see another light is shut down or fill light. I'll let the unit start and create the light for you.
the unit try to start but no diesel if we keep doing this then it's going to be a problem for the starter this is a checking light the unit cannot start the unit will try three times for himself Second time try. Now it come up a one line at the bottom. This is a shutdown light or fail, which means the unit shut down. You need to look at it and check it out. Now we got a good example for leaking fluid. When we walk along track, we can see there's a dripping red coolant on here, the bottom of the unit. This is coolant, it's red. We can see the floor on the bottom. This is red. So that means we have a coolant leak from the unit. Where's the leak? We don't know. As being a driver, we don't care where's the leak. But we need to report this to the dispatch and then the dispatch will inform the mechanic. Obviously, you are not supposed to use this trailer. When we check the fuel tank, we need to look at the bottom of the fuel tank see if there's a diesel leak or not sometimes the diesel tank was damaged on the load and you didn't notice that it's slowly dripping in the yard then you drip a little bit little bit when you go on the load the MTO will catch you and give you fine for the diesel in the tank we have to pay attention one thing especially in winter. Usually we will put the diesel conditioner into the tank. I will say one bottle, one tank of fuel. Why we need to do this? Because the diesel in Canada, Canada is so cold that the diesel might become gel or frozen. Then the liver cannot pick up the diesel and then you stop and then the air you go into the fuel system and you not stop anymore because the diesel is frozen like ice or like a gel how can we stop or prevent this we put the diesel conditioner into the tank before the cold weather coming let's say we know that okay it's gonna be minus 10 minus 20 next day and then we put the diesel conditioner in. We cannot do that. Let's say we forgot it, the tank is become gel or too cold already. And then you put the diesel conditioner in, it cannot heal the gel of unfrozen it. That's not the function of the diesel conditioner. We have to put it in to prevent become gel or frozen. That's the diesel conditioner main purpose. If it's a diesel is gel or frozen already, don't expect that you put the diesel conditioner in and you will unfloze it or ungel something. No, it will not happen. When it's become gel, it will stay that status until the warm weather comes. But in winter, it never comes. You have to put inside the shop so that it will complete unfrozen it, and then put the air con the, the, the diesel conditioner in, and to prevent it. But that takes time. I think it's not this block. So we go through the whole lever operation today, and the inside mostly explain the lever operation, the lever main components, and some alarms, self-priming system, and the 
diesel conditioner in winter. Those things are necessary on the road. If you need more information or you have some questions, you can call me or call dispatch. Dispatch are always be ready to help. Thank you.